put aside everything you thought you knew about human evolution, because anthropologists say that a mysterious ape man recently coexisted with our ancestors. Only large brained modern humans or their close ancestors have previously been shown to have existed in Africa at a late date, and there is very little fossil evidence for any other hominins in sub equatorial Africa. However, it is now clear that a variety of hominin lineages lived in this area, some of which contributed DNA to modern humans, and at least one of them, Homo naledi, survived the earliest stages of human diversification. Homo sapiens sapiens are a phylogenetic relict species. A relict in biology is a species that has survived from a lineage that once had a greater diversity. Another effect of considering modern humans as an relict species is that they paint a distorted and incomplete image of the diversity of the human clade based on their characteristics. According to phylogenetic models, Homo naledi either descended from a clade that included Homo sapiens and other ancient humans, or it descended from a sister group to Homo erectus and larger brained humans. In point of fact, African paleontology concerning the genesis and evolution of Homo sapiens is noticeably inferior to that of Eurasia. The description of the fossils of Homo naledi, which contain by far the biggest assemblage of archaic human fossils in Africa, greatly expanded the African human picture outside of Homo sapiens sapiens. However, some paleontologists, including some of those who were involved in the original study, contend that it is also possible that Homo sapiens or Homo erectus, or both, could have descended from Homo naledi. This would negate the possibility that Homo naledi was simply the last member of a lineage that tracked parallel to the one that produced us. Some anthropologists are even hesitant to refer to Naledi as a human, due to the creature's unusual combination of modern and primitive traits, which should cause scientists to reconsider what constitutes a human. The general consensus among paleoanthropologists and archaeologists, up until recently, has been that morphologically primitive hominins like Homo Naledi did not persist in Africa into the later Pleistocene. The characteristics of Homo naledi have long been thought to be adaptations for the production of material civilization. For example, their wrist, hand, and fingertip anatomy are similar to those of modern humans and Neanderthals in a number of derived ways. Which hominid species created the early Stone Age industries in southern Africa has been a topic of debate for a long time. The rising star cave system in South Africa is where the bones of at least 15 ancient humans were discovered and this new human species was declared in 2015. The finds represent the greatest collection of a single hominid species ever made in Africa. Homo naledi probably is not a direct progenitor of contemporary humans because it blends ancient and contemporary traits. Indeed, paleontologists found it challenging to locate Homo naledi in the chronology of human evolution, because of the species' mixture of contemporary and archaic traits. Together, the information showed that the remains of Homo naledi were between 236,000 and 335,000 years old, proving that they lived in southern Africa throughout the Pleistocene epoch. The presence of a varied assortment of hominins in the subequatorial region is consistent with our current understanding of diversity in other savanna adapted species, as well as paleoclimate and paleoenvironmental data. The discovery of Homo naledi sheds new insight on the fossil and archaeological records as we cannot rule out the possibility that this lineage was responsible for the production of some Acheulean or Middle Stone Age tool industries. What's more, it is the rise that Homo sapiens began to emerge at the same period in several regions of Africa. It is possible that other individuals from each species, whose remains have not yet been found, may have existed at the same time as them, and that they may have even crossed paths. Paleontologists created one snapshot of Homo naledi's tenure on Earth using the new information discovered by dating the sediments and the bones they held, possibly one from close to the end of its existence. Its exact position in relation to other members of the human genus was still unknown though. The dating of the fossils just represents the age of a small number of fossils. It does not indicate the historical span for this species. This species probably first arose considerably earlier, perhaps two million years ago. There were several dating methods employed to establish a chronological frame. Optical stimulated luminescence and uranium series dating, on cave formations, provided the minimum age of 236,000 years. 
the uranium series and electron spin resonance dating on three teeth yielded a maximum age of 335,000 years. A first evaluation was challenging, due to the cave's absence of sediments or other fossil remains that could be easily dated. The scientists waited until the skeleton study was finished since the dating technique needed material from teeth, which would have damaged the original descriptions of remains. Given the skeleton's many basic features, the dates came as somewhat of a surprise. The find is the richest collection of fossil hominins ever found in Africa, taking into account the quantity, sexes, and age ranges represented. Despite being regarded as a member of the human family, it is challenging to place this species in relation to other family members, due to its mosaic of traits that are shared by and distinct from other known hominins. Additionally, it is conceivable that Homo naledi and modern humans, who, according to the Out of Africa hypothesis, emerged in southern and eastern Africa around 200,000 years ago, crossed paths, perhaps even the extinction of Homo naledi was a result of direct or indirect modern human competition. This is an intriguing scenario that needs additional investigation and support. Given the relatively recent age of the remains, it is possible that certain early modern human populations, like those represented by the Floresbad skull from South Africa and the Carbway skull from Zambia, existed in the same area as Homo naledi. Although we cannot be certain that they were in communication or that they lived close to one another. As stated, the skeleton of Homo naledi exhibits an unusual combination of traits that were totally unanticipated. The chest, hips and shoulders still have rudimentary characteristics more akin to Australopithecines. But more human-like adaptations associated with activities like mobility, hand use and food processing are visible in the lower body, skull and teeth. What's more, there are several characteristics that are exclusive to just one species of hominid. Recent studies looked at the impressions that Homo naledi's brain left on its skull. Despite having a brain that was three times smaller than that of a modern human, and only slightly larger than that of a chimpanzee, about 560 cubic centimeters for males and 465 cubic centimeters for females, Homo naledi's brain appears to have been similar in shape and structure to our own. In fact, the asymmetrical brain of Homo naledi is comparable to that of modern humans and the frontal lobe resembles that of a modern human more than an ape. The results show that the evolution of human brain size was not a straightforward pattern of progressive enlargement through time. The scientists also note that despite having a considerably smaller brain, Homo naledi may have shared some behaviors with other humans in the parts of the brain that have been linked to the evolution of tool usage, language and social behavior. Similar to how Homo floresiensis persisted on its island refuge in Southeast Asia, some scientists think it is more possible that the Homo naledi remains represent an offshoot lineage that endured in an isolated, continental cul-de-sac. But how did two incredibly distinct groups of hominins coexist in southern Africa for so long? The fact that Homo naledi coexisted with early Homo sapiens in the same part of Africa, provides us with insight into the enormous variety of diverse human forms that existed during the Pleistocene. How did Homo naledi survive in the face of more intelligent rivals? There were few recoverable plant or animal remains where the fossils of Homo naledi were discovered. The paleoenvironment is difficult to reproduce as a result. Homo naledi may have led a comparable lifestyle, and had a similar diet to other hunter-gatherers living elsewhere in Africa at the same time including early Homo sapiens, according to the teeth and lower body bones. Compared to most Australopithecines, Homo naledi's teeth and lower jaw muscles are significantly smaller, indicating a diet that did not need intensive chewing or processing of plants like grasses or sedges. Nearly half of the teeth have one or more chips on the enamel surface, indicating that the person habitually consumed hard, abrasive foods or dirt and grit from the environment. These foods could include subsurface plant roots, which would be heavily gritted if eaten raw. Or did Homo naledi avoid competition by maintaining a different niche for food and lifestyle, enabling it to survive for longer? It's possible that Homo naledi was relatively geographically isolated for much of its evolutionary history. Its upper body skeleton and curled fingers might be an indication that it spent more time foraging in and among trees. This also would have allowed them to escape from predators and attacks by other humans' rivals. The Floris Bad Skull, 
which may be an ancestor or close relative of modern humans, and the Carbway skull, which represents some kind of archaic human that may have undergone significant divergence. Also, evidence from modern people's genomes that archaic lineages have been contributing to modern populations, and may have existed until relatively recently are all found in southern Africa during this time period. How did Homo naledi manage to maintain its unique traits, despite coexisting so closely with other human species? Given that there is no boundary or barrier, it is challenging to attribute it to geographic isolation. From South Africa to Tanzania, the environment is the same, it is a continuous savanna habitat. In point of fact, different hominin populations' ecological niches must be distinguished if they are to coexist in a region over time. One of the two species will become locally extinct if their niches greatly overlap. This competitive exclusion principle is well known, before it defies belief that two groups or early humans could have occupied the same niche without coming into contact. They don't appear to be in a distinct ecological niche. That is a difficulty, and we cannot argue that they coexisted in this circumstance because they are utilizing resources in different ways. What's more, Homo naledi also shared our limb proportions, and there is no obvious reason why it couldn't have utilized stone tools. In fact, the abundance of Homo naledi fossils in an area that, according to proponents of the out of Africa hypothesis, may have served as the cradle of Homo sapiens is striking, in comparison to the lack of Homo sapiens fossils. Another issue concerns the unlikely possibility that Homo sapiens and Homo naledi shared ecological niches, and coexisted successfully in the same region. Together, the data support the hypothesis that Homo naledi survived until Homo sapiens from the north invaded southern Africa, where they had no need to compete with it during its evolution. The Floresbad fossil in this instance would serve as an example of Homo sapiens invaders from the north. According to one theory, these Homo naledi may have been the last of their kind, driven underground by modern human invaders and only emerging at night to hunt and gather food. Similar to Ishi, a Native American who was the last of his tribe and is referred to as the last wild Indian in the United States, who lived in a mountain refuge in Northern California until 1911. Indeed, we'll have to think about some really profound ideas, related to what it means to be human. Have we been misinformed about sophisticated behaviors such as burying the dead, which we previously believed to be specific to modern humans? Is such behavior something that the most ancient people have always been able to perform, and did we inherit it from deep time? Compared to other human species, Homo naledi is a glaring exception. Paleoanthropologists have been taken aback by the species' unusual blend of characteristics shared by ancient and contemporary human species, as well as its archaic qualities in comparatively modern times. The presumed trajectory of the human lineage has been fundamentally altered by these discoveries, which has caused scientists to re-evaluate their preconceived notions about the development of hominins and what it means to be human. However, the scientific process and the nature of science are both demonstrated by this discovery. The complicated nature of human development, and the oversimplified out-of-Africa hypothesis are both highlighted by the latest dating. Therefore, the discovery of Homo naledi drives another nail into that analytical coffin as well.